Indigenous communities in Brazil are protesting deforestation of the Amazon, as well as a lack of support to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. China's National Intellectual Property Administration announced that it had granted the first invention patent to the domestically developed COVID-19 vaccine candidate. Israeli artillery attacked two locations north and south of the Gaza Strip this Monday, causing serious damage. From the headquarters of Teleso English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south and I'm Katrina Goss. Dozens of members of Brazil's Cayapo indigenous community have blocked the trans amazonian Highway to protest against deforestation as well as the lack of support provided by the Bolsonaro government to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. President Bolsonaro recently claimed that it was a lie that fires were ravaging the Amazon rainforest, despite data from his own government showing the rising number of blazes. The far-right leader has faced international condemnation for his failure to protect the Amazon from rising deforestation and increased fires. Satellite data from the Brazilian Space Agency shows that the number of forest fires rose 28% in the last year. Experts say the fires are typically not sparked naturally, but intentionally started to illegally clear land for farming and ranching. Rural workers in the Antipana region of Guatemala have denounced violent acts against indigenous and rural communities. The Rural Workers Committee of the Antiplano denounced the lack of interest on the part of the authorities in clarifying the murders of 40 rural families at a farm in Alta Verapaz. The committee accused the business sector and the government of provoking the violent acts as the families were working at the farm before being evicted by armed groups. The organisation has called on the public ministry to open an investigation into the armed groups and the owners of the farm in order to avoid an increase in the killings and evictions of rural workers. Bolivian health authorities have reported over 1,000 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, pushing the total number over 100,000. The epicentres of the outbreak in the country are the cities of Santa Cruz, with more than 38,000 cases reported, followed by La Paz with over 25,000 and Cochabamba with more than 11,000 cases. Meanwhile, Bolivian health authorities have forecast that the epidemic will reach its peak come September. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 4,058, but the official numbers are thought to fall short of the reality. The Argentinian government has announced the creation of a credit line with 0% interest to help boost the cultural and creative industries. The move forms part of a plan to help mitigate the impact of the economic crisis on workers. In the financial palace, authorities announced their plan to help sustain one of the worst hit economic sectors by the pandemic. This line of credit has 0% interest rate and a grace period of 12 months. We are all aware here about the impact the pandemic has had on the cultural sector. This credit line will help large companies as well as those who work on their own. We are offering loans amounting to 150,000 pesos. Those who have requested similar loans at 0% interest will not be eligible. The 150,000 pesos will be made available via a credit card for the convenience of citizens. For authorities of the Culture Ministry, the importance of this credit line lies in promoting the creation of a communal culture network. Besides the financial support, we'll be able to create a cultural network based on diversity and on a strong central government. The Culture Minister has asked us to develop these fronts. The Ministry is heavily investing in various cultural programs nationwide. Children, teenagers and senior citizens are also being convened to participate in the Evita Games, which also promote social integration, reinforcing a collective spirit. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador has stressed that the COVID-19 vaccine to be produced in Argentina will be made available to all Mexicans. He explained that the drug is already in phase three of trials and is being tested on hundreds of people. It is thought that we will be able to have this vaccine ready in the first quarter of next year. We will have a national vaccination plan and it is going to be universal medicine, which means that it will be available for everyone. And President López Obrador also noted that the vaccine will be provided free of charge. 
The government is going to pay for it using the national budget, which is Mexican people's money. The vaccine will be available to everyone in the country for free. On Monday, Cuban health authorities presented the latest update on the number of COVID-19 cases in the country. And yesterday, 48 people tested positive for COVID-19 in our country, a high figure compared to the number of cases the day before. With these 48 new cases, Cuba reaches a total of 3,364 people who have tested positive for COVID-19 in our country. And the National Director of Epidemiology at the Cuban Ministry of Public Health also presented an updated report on the number of people who have recovered from COVID-19. These 72 discharges are from Havana, 50 from Pinal del Rio, 1 from Artemisa, 12 from Mayabeque, 1 from Matanzas, 2 from Brilla Clara, and two from Santiago de Cuba, who were discharged yesterday. Normally, these cases are admitted in Havana, but they belong to those provinces, although some are in their own provinces. We always mention the two people who were evacuated, and with these 72 discharges that we have just mentioned, the total number of recoveries is 2,692, which represents 80% of all the confirmed cases in Cuba. Cuban Prime Minister Manuel Marrero announced that the annual International Tourism Fair will be postponed to May 2021. Marrero confirmed that the major tourism event in the country will be held in the world-famous resort of Varadero. During a visit to Matanzas province, the Prime Minister also chaired a virtual meeting of the temporary working group for the prevention and control of COVID-19, which analyzes the situation in the country daily. The Ministry of Health of the Turks and Caicos Island reported that no new COVID-19 cases have been detected in the last 24 hours. The number of active cases remains at 240, with two confirmed cases continuing to be under hospital care. The public health team continues to implement contact tracing and control measures in relation to every active case. No new recoveries have been recorded, with the total number remaining at 55. The total number of cases confirmed in the country since the outbreak of the virus stands at 298. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 2. To ban entry in the first instance for non-residents that have recently visited countries. Guyana, Suriname and the Bahamas in the Caribbean region have all registered further coronavirus deaths. Suriname announced that five people died from the virus over the last 24 hours, representing the highest figure in any one day in the South American nation. The new deaths bring the total to 43. Meanwhile, neighbouring Guyana registered its 23rd COVID-19 death on Sunday, but the Ministry of Health reported that the number of positive cases had surpassed 700. The Ministry of Health in the Bahamas continues to record significant numbers of cases among its population. In its latest bulletin, 63 new COVID-19 cases were confirmed, bringing the total number to 1,000. 315, while one new COVID-19 fatality was confirmed, taking the death toll to 18. I'll be right back after this short break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. On Monday, Israeli artillery attacked two locations north and south of the Gaza Strip, causing serious damage but no casualties. The Israeli artillery stationed east of Bet Hanan, north of the Gaza Strip, fired three shells at a location east of the city, causing damage to the surrounding area and property. The second attack was launched against a location east of the town of Khan Yunis, south of the Gaza Strip, completely destroying it. Israel has recently escalated its attacks on the besieged Gaza Strip, including cutting off fuel supplies, forcing the Gaza power plant to cease operations. On Monday, the Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Sheikh Taya denounced the US-brokered diplomatic deal between the United Arab Emirates and Israel. <coughs> The Palestinian government is announcing its full support for the position of the Palestinian Authority and the President in rejecting the American, Israeli and Emirati Declaration of Normalizing the Relations between the UAE and the occupying state of Israel. The normalizing of the relations and the prayers by the Arabs at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is under Israeli sovereignty, is rejected. The normalizing of relations with Israel, with the short of Ottoman claiming that this would serve the Palestinian cause, is also rejected. 
The freezing of the annexation of the Palestinian lands happened because the strong Palestinian position against it, not because of another reason. On Monday, the Syrian news agency SANA reported that U.S. fighter jets bombed a Syrian army checkpoint in the city of al Kamishli in the northeastern province of al Hasaka. According to the agency, one Syrian soldier was killed and two others wounded as a result of the attack. It was also reported that the wounded had already been taken to nearby hospitals to receive medical care. The bombing took place after Syrian forces blocked the passage of a U.S. military patrol at a checkpoint in Tal Dajab, southeast of the city of al Kamishli. The Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention confirmed more than 1.1 million COVID-19 cases in the continent this Monday. According to latest figures, more than 25,000 COVID-19 deaths have been reported across Africa. South Africa remains the hardest hit country, with over 587,000 COVID-19 cases and nearly 12,000 deaths. Egypt ranks second with more than 96,000 infections and over 5,000 deaths. They're followed by Nigeria with a little more than 49,000 cases and just under 1,000 deaths. On a positive note, over 834,000 people are reported to have recovered from the virus across the African continent. On Monday, India's COVID-19 death toll surpassed 51,000 after 961 new fatalities were reported in the last 24 hours. India has reported the fourth highest death toll in the world behind the United States, Brazil and Mexico. Meanwhile, the number of confirmed coronavirus cases surpassed 2.6 million on Monday after a surge of over 58,000 cases in the last 24 hours. August has seen a huge spike in fatalities, with more than a quarter of the country's total COVID-19 deaths occurring in the past 17 days. Meanwhile, over 1.9 million people have recovered from the virus. We're getting these number, increased number of cases. Number one, People are almost over it. They think it's, it's not harming them anymore. It's not giving them any drawback. Corona is just a word of mouth. It's just, it's just a rumor. Number two, uh, we didn't have much tests available earlier. Now, there are a lot of uh, government facilities, as well as private. So uh, people are going out for all these tests and stuff. On Monday, the Nigerian government announced that international flights will resume at both the Lagos and Abuja airports from August 29th. Minister of Aviation, Siri Kahadi, made the announcement on his Twitter account. The minister noted that both the Mutala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos and the Namdi Asikiwi Airport in Madbuja would be the first airports to begin international operations. These two airports were also the first to welcome domestic flights when they restarted. The minister stressed that the applicable protocols and procedures would be announced in due course. The government is going ahead with reopening its airspace for domestic flights only to begin with. Nigeria's aviation sector has lost... On Monday, a funeral was held for three Lebanese firefighters who were killed in the massive explosion at Shuk Beirut earlier this month. Friends, family members and colleagues gathered outside the Beirut Fire Brigade station to bid farewell to the three victims who were killed while trying to tackle the blaze at the port. The disaster caused the death of over 180 people and wounded more than 6,000. 30 residents are still missing. Now we've come to the end of this news brief, but remember you can find these and many of the stories on our website at tellysoenglish.net and you can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. For Tell you So English, I'm Katrina Goss and thank you for watching.